Welcome to the TDM driveway. This is a video I've wanted to do for a while now. We've done a little bit on our driveway and what cars we have in the past, but actually we get a lot of comments still saying, what cars have you got? What else have you guys got? Can you show us the garage, show us the fleet? So that's what we're gonna to do today for those of you that are interested. We are not journalists. I'm not doing this video to educate you on these cars. We're just two genuine guys that work really, really hard, have a passion for cars, and I wanna show you and tell you what it's actually like to own them not tell you all the stats and every all the little details. So we're gonna start off 812 Superfast and 488 Pista, the two most recent additions to the fleet. Honestly, these are mint. This has got a Novatec exhaust, straight Novatec system as well. It's not kind of just a half arse one like a lot of them are. So because we've actually got the full Novatec system, this sounds unbelievable. There's a pitch to it that you just can't get. Those of you that have followed the channel for a while will know that a couple of the other cars we've got do also have straight pipe systems, but this one, this one is just the best sounding car I've come across. It needs a reg plate, but we'll get that sorted. We literally picked it up a couple of days ago. Amazing, amazing car. Took it down to London the other day. Just the comfort, the driving position, the sound, the exhaust tone, everything's bang on. Great car. Visually though, especially from the front, it's not my favorite. The back is beautiful, but not quite the front. Now speaking of visually, 488 Pista. What a car this is. Visually, this is the one. From the scoop at the front, to the stripe, to the stripped out interior, the carbon doors, the way you've got the Italian flag on the seat, every detail about this car visually is perfect. And I actually really, really, really enjoy driving it. Again, only had it for a couple of days, but it just seems so planted. It's just so playful, yet seems so safe. Um, it's very, very fast. It's the fastest car I believe we have. Haven't raced it yet to know, but I do think this will be the fastest car that we have. Honestly, an absolute masterpiece. Probably a very good asset to own as well financially. I think I'll actually make the money back, hopefully, if not potentially a little bit of profit in this one, which will be a nice change. Next up, Audi R8, a sentimental car for me. This is my very first supercar, a car that still has a place in my heart, a car that I will struggle to sell, even though it's probably time for it to go. It just looks amazing. Obviously, when I first got it, it was in black. In videos that you might have seen in the past, it was black. It was a complete Batmobile from head to toe. Apart from the carbon accents, everything was gloss black, which I do think was cool, but I do think this satin racing green wrap is slightly nicer, especially coupled with the bronze alloy. I just think it looks the business. Coupled with the carbon accents all around, full carbon kit, and actually a straight Capristo system. So again, sounds fantastic. This car genuinely is beautiful. And you know what, it's 90K. You aren't gonna find anything like this for 90K. There's no supercar on the market, or car in general, that gives you this much character and this much car for 90K. Don't get me wrong, there's some great things out there. SVR, RS7, things that we've had in the past in terms of value for money. But this, a supercar that sounds like that for 90K, you won't find anything. Next up, 720S, McLaren 720. Up until this piece arrived the other day, I would have said this was the fastest in the fleet. Very, very, very fast car. Just seems to always put it down. I think it's because the engine is behind the seating position. So it's sat on that rear axle and it just really plants the car down. Uh, that for me makes this car very drivable. You know, compare it with something like the 812 or the Aston Martin where you're constantly slipping and sliding. This does seem to put it down. Don't get me wrong, it likes to spin, but it does typically put it down quite well. The driving position in this is great. The comfortability of it is actually not bad either. It's much more comfortable than the, the straight upright carbon buckets in this. Much, much more comfortable in here. The scoop, the PI carbon kit, all these carbon accents, the carbon hood, the carbon vent on top, the, the scoop the big carbon wing at the back, all these little accents. This was like, don't get me wrong, I'm not sure on this completely, but I think it might be a 50K carbon kit, um, which is just absurd, the, the, the PI carbon conversion. So very, very expensive, but it looks the business, which is really, really cool. A great, great car. Next up, we have Aston Martin DBS Superleggera. I've actually done a review on the channel before on this. There's a thumbnail on the screen and link in the description, check that out. What a car, what a character it lets you play. It just lets you feel like James Bond. You throw a suit on, Skyfall, honestly, not a lot like it, not a lot like it. In terms of the performance, it, it could be better. You know, at the top end, it's, it's very fast. In the mid and the, quite, and the, the slower ranges, it, it really just won't keep up with anything. Um, I think it's probably the slowest here in, in those, probably up to maybe, I don't know, 70 miles an hour. It just will come last every time because it just spins so bloody much. But it doesn't matter because that's not what it's about. It's a GT car. It's a comfortable driving position. It's great materials. Everything feels proper. The networking aspects of driving an Aston Martin, it just levels you up beyond anything else. And I think really this car, in terms of what you're buying it for, which is character, role play, being who you want to be, nothing will give you that like this will. 
And you know what? It's not bad, not bad value for money. This was like 140, 150K, I think. Up next, we have Porsche Taycan. Currently has a flat tire, which is just making it sit really strange, but it's a daily car. It's a daily driver. It gets used every single day. Absolutely love this car. The satin black wrap that sits on top of the crayon gray factory paint does make it look a lot better. I think it definitely looks meaner, more aggressive, and it definitely looks more expensive in satin instead of just being a typical IT businessman's car. It now looks like a gangster car. It looks cool. And you know what? It's so fast as well. 0 to 62.3 seconds, which is just absurd. Dusts everything else on this driveway off the line. Serious G-force when it takes off. And you know what? Probably the most refined car I've ever driven. Everything about it just feels proper. The way it steers, the way it cruises, the comfortability, the features, the technology, everything's just mint. And you know what, with it being in satin black, I'll overlay a few clips on the screen. When it's cruising at night with that tail bar at the back, it looks the business. It looks really, really cool. Not a great asset to have owned financially. Lost quite a lot of money. I think we paid 140K for this, which considering where the, the Taycan market is at now, for those of you that know, picture on the screen. It's a lot of money lost. The Turbo S Sports Chrono Pack will obviously help us out in terms of retaining some value, but really we've lost a lot of money on this and it's a nightmare. But that's fine because it's a business car, it's a daily, it's what it's all about. Finally, Lamborghini Urus. Now this was kind of like the other daily. This was my first like supercar brand. Obviously I had the R8 a couple of years back, but this really for me was my first supercar brand. It was a Lambo. You know, it fulfilled a dream, a childhood dream. We've since filled the, the man's dream of the Ferrari. This for me is the childhood dream. It's what I wanted as a kid, Lamborghini. You know, the badge, the name, it rings a lot of those bells that we had as children and things that I want to actually live in real life. And this car gave me the chance to do that. And honestly, I can't really fault the car. Yes, it's an RSQ8 with some badges. Yes, it's a VW Touareg chassis. It's still a Lamborghini Urus and it lets you play a character that you just couldn't play in those other cars. It sounds better, it's way faster, the interior is better. The fact that you're driving with a Lambo badge, that is what you're paying for and that has real value. And I can say as an owner of this that's had one, would I have had an RSQ8 and saved the money? No, never. I would never have done that. RSQ8, yeah, it's the same car, and if, but I'm not buying just the performance. I'm buying the experience. I wouldn't even buy an RSQ8 if I was buying performance. So when you think about it, that phrase of like, just buy an RSQ8, doesn't even make any sense. Because if you're saying that the RSQ8 has the same performance, who buys an RSQ8 for performance? You're buying the experience, you're buying the fact that it's a Lambo, that's what it's all about. Now, this is pretty much the fleet. There's a lot of cars that aren't here at the moment, which is kind of frustrating, but they're never ever all here. This is something that any guy who has a lot of cars will tell you. They are never ever ever all here. There's always something wrong. There's always a flat tire, there's always a service, there's always this, that, recall whatever it might be. So there's a few cars that aren't currently here. Huracan Performante Spider. This has been on the channel loads. You guys have seen this car. It will likely be up for sale soon. We still currently have it. It's just not here. It's at Lambo. We also have M2 Competition. This has been not really shown much on the channel before, but it's currently in for a full track conversion. It's getting a complete, it's like 25K worth of conversion. It's gonna be absolutely mint. Can't wait to get that back. Full library, take it on track. We'll share you guys how that looks when it arrives back. AMG GT, currently at Merck getting a service. Range Rover SVR, also in Land Rover on a recall. Oh, and a Mercedes Sprinter, because we actually got a Mercedes Sprinter recently. And you know what, it isn't half bad to drive. For a van, honestly, it's not that bad. I actually quite enjoy driving it. So this is the fleet, guys. You guys asked for it, here it is. These are the cars that we have currently on the driveway and those that we have currently not here. Let me know, what's your favorite car? If you had the choice of any of these cars and you had to pick just one, excluding money, just one car, what would you pick? Let us know in the comments and also let me know what car we should get next.